Lesson two, practice problems. The first problem says the second H-shaped polygon is a scaled copy of the first. Okay, so that's, they just come out and say it. It's a scaled copy of the first. So question A, move this up a little bit. Question A says, show one pair of corresponding points and two pairs of corresponding sides in the original polygon and its copy. Consider using colored pencil to highlight corresponding parts or labeling some of the vertices. Okay, so one pair of corresponding points. Um, it really doesn't matter where you pick, but I'm gonna, let's say I pick this point right there in the original shape. That definitely corresponds to that point right there. You know, because it's in the, you know, it's, it's at the top left most point on that H-like polygon, you know. And um, what else? Uh, I would say that this part of the polygon right here, that corresponds to right there. You know, we can pick other areas as well. Let's say right here, this, this part corresponds with that part right there. It's really small, but they correspond. All right, so question B, it says, what scale factor takes the original polygon to its smaller copy? All right, now the thing that I would, I kind of noticed right off the bat is, um, you know, is the, let me erase this so it's a little easier to kind of read. One thing that I noticed right off the bat is this part. You know, if we look at, pens aren't working, here we go. If I look at that part of the, that polygon, now that part corresponds to this part, okay? So that much is true. And uh, in the original, it's four, you know, four uh, square units across, you know? And uh, in the scaled, it's one. All right, so it got smaller. So when you guys do scale, you know, when you guys do scale factor, when you want to do the scale factor, um, you want to take the scaled value and then divide it by the original value. Now, a lot of times those numbers don't divide, so you end up like with a fraction. And sometimes they divide, and you can end up with a, an integer, a whole number, that's good. Um, but for this one, you just take the original, or not the original, but the scaled number was one, and the original was four. So there's your scale factor. The scale factor, scale factor for this one is one fourth, which makes sense because it's smaller, right? If it had a, if it has a scale factor that's less than one, it's definitely a reduction in size. You know, if it has a scale factor that is greater than one, it's going to be an enlargement. It's going to get bigger. All right. Now for number two, um, it says figure B is a scaled copy of figure A. Select all of the statements that must be true. Now, there is no figure B or figure A. There's no picture to go with this. This is a little bit abstract, but it's just saying, imagine that you have two figures that are scale copies of each other. Okay. So if we know that they're scaled copies, what must be true? Well, figure B is larger than figure A. Um, well, that's we're not positive about this because we don't know the we don't know the scale factor. So if we knew the scale factor, uh, we would know that to be true. But for question A, we would be strictly guessing, right? We would we're, be kind of a coin toss so to speak. I guess unless it didn't change, then there's a third option. But yeah, uh, for A, um, it's going to be either smaller or bigger, but we're not sure. For B, it says that figure B has the same number of edges as figure A. Yeah, of course it is. So that one is going to be true. All right? In all of our shapes, not it, it has not happened where all of a sudden it's it's grown like a, another side altogether. That doesn't happen. And uh, for C, figure B has the same perimeter as figure A. And now I, 
for, for C, I could say, well, because you could have a scale factor of one, and if it has a scale factor of one, then it has the same perimeter. But I'm thinking like, if, if, there, if this question is talking about scale factor, it's probably some type of change. Either it was enlarged or it was a reduction. So I'll, I'll just put on here maybe, you know, but I, I would say it's most definitely true, 99%, but I'm not sure if, it, if the scale factor, you know, if the scale factor equals one, then there was no change, you know, so they would, it would have the same perimeter. So I guess that's why it's okay. Um, for D, figure B has the same number of angles as figure A. Now that one's kind of like B, you know, the same number of edges. Well, it's going to have exactly the same number of angles as well. So that one is true. And for E, figure B has angles with the same measure as figure A, and that is true. You can't say that the side lengths are going to be the same, but you can definitely say that the angles are the same. You know, just kind of going right here. I mean, these are all right angles, but none of these angles, you can tell, none of these angles changed. You know, this is still a right angle, and so is this. That's still a right angle. And there's right angles all over the place here. There's a right angle. There's a right angle. So there's not all of a sudden like a, an obtuse angle somewhere. I mean, right here, this is called a reflex angle, because that's, that's actually not 90 degrees. That's, um, that's uh, 270 degrees, you know, which don't even worry about it. All right, moving on to question number three. Number three, I don't know, did I answer that question? Yeah, I did. Okay, for number three, it says uh, polygon B is a scaled copy of polygon A. All right, so that is known. Uh, what is the scale factor from A to B, from polygon A to, to polygon B? And so uh, in order to figure that out, we need, we need some numbers that correspond with one another, you know, and, and uh, some sides that correspond to each other that have some numbers, I think would be important. And right there, um, the the top part of that shape, that horizontal line, that um, those both have numbers. There's 2.5 on the top, and then there's five on the bottom. And so, like if we treat this like we have been, we just take the scale number and then divide that by the um, by the original number. You get five divided by two and a half. Five divided by two and a half is actually two. Right, so that's that means the scale factor is a two. For question B, find the missing length of each side marked with a question mark in polygon B. So there's a couple question marks there that um, that we don't know. Well, since we know that the scale factor is two, that means we're gonna take the corresponding side with it, like right here, that's 1.5. And so I'm gonna do 1.5 times two. So one and five tenths times two is going to be three, okay? So I'm gonna put a three right there. And same thing goes for, um, for this little diagonal right there. Now that's two and a half, which is the same as the top of it. And that corresponds with that. So two and a half, I'm just gonna write it out though, but two and a half times the scale factor is going to be five. So that, there you go. For question C, it says determine the measure of each angle marked with a question mark in polygon A. I'm going to erase some of my markings because I want to show you something. But determine the, the measure of each angle. Now remember, um, when you have a scale uh, drawing, the, the side lengths definitely will change. They get bigger, get, you know, get longer, get shorter, whatever. But um, the angles should not change. They will not change. If they do change, it's not truly scaled. You know, so all the angles are the same. So for instance, I'll just go ahead and just do this. Like right here, this angle, if I just outline this angle right here, and then if I just kind of move that angle over and kind of overlay it with the original shape, you can see that angle's exactly the same. This is definitely, you know, the scaled copy is definitely bigger, 
but the angle is not bigger. It's still 53 degrees. So that the corresponding angles are going to be exactly the same. So you can safely say that this is 53 degrees. And now I don't think I have to do this for everything, but I'm just going to do it again. But right here we got an 82 degree angle, and that corresponds with this part. And definitely, you know, those side lengths are definitely shorter, but that's not the point. The angle is the same. So that's 82 degrees. And, and am I missing anything else? That was it. Now this definitely, I mean, I, I wouldn't guess, but I, I would say that's probably 90, and so is that. There's no question mark there. All right, for number four. For number four, um, again, what I would do is I would take, because we're looking for the missing value, looking for the missing value. So this is a multiplication. So if you want to know what the missing value is, I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide. So I'm going to do 40 divided by 8. 40 divided by 8, divided by eight is 5. All right. Uh, now this next one is addition. That's addition. So I'm going to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So I'm going to do 40 minus 8. 40 minus 8 is 32. Okay, uh, this one is division, so I'm going to do the opposite of the division and multiply. So 21, um, <clears throat> well, if I, if I do this, I've got sure, to be careful about this. But if I multiply 7 times 21, that's going to be way too big, so that's not going to work. But um, one thing I can do is I can do 21 divided by 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3 right so you can kind of move those around a little bit and you can safely say that 21 divided by 3 is going to be 7 so that kind of works out that way because you can write it both ways you know 21 divided by 3 is 7 now those are the only two ways you can kind of get that you can't do like you can't do 7 divided by 21 that doesn't equal 3 that equals 1 third you know so we got to be careful but as long as I put the 21 first you know when you do division order does matter all right, uh, for D, you have subtraction, so um, you want to just do addition here. Just do 21 plus 7, that's 28. Put that right there. And then for E, you got 21 times what number is 7? So I'm going to divide for that one. I'm going to do 7 divided by 21, and then that reduces by 7. So it's 20, you know, 7 doesn't divide by 21 nicely, it comes out to be like. 0 0.33333 and it's much better to put a fraction rather than putting a repeating decimal so I'm going to put one-third so 21 times one-third 